Well, how's everybody doing? I'll wait around and see if anybody wants to play or if everybody's busy or you're traveling. I get to stay home. My husband and I decided to stay home. And so I don't have to, you know, go around and be busy like a lot of you are probably right now. <laughs> So I thought, well, out there, there might be some others like me who are going to be staying home and um, maybe your families are far away or circumstances don't allow you to get away or for them to come. And so I just thought I'd come by and do a little chit chat for a while. Oh, there are some people. Hello, Teresa. Oh, there's a few people. Oh, what are you guys all up to? <laughs> what are you up to, Teresa? Are you at home? Are you traveling? Are you visiting somebody? Are you cooking? We've got a few people popping in. That's wonderful. I wasn't sure. I thought most people would be busy. Home, no cooking. See, that's me too. I'm here with a nice warm cup of peppermint tea and a oatmeal cookie. <laughs> that's my excitement. <laughs> Well, what I was going to show people and see what kind of response I get. This was, oh, you're done cooking until the morning. Oh, you're one of those that prepares things ahead of time. That's good. That's smart. <clears throat> but I bet you're tired. Well, this was probably, let me think back. I think back in, I'm trying to think of the month. It was in the springtime. I contacted a few of my little crafty friends through Facebook and gave them the dimensions to make a small little mini book. And the reason I did that, I think I contacted maybe, I don't remember now how many it was, maybe around 10 or so. And <clears throat> I gave them dimensions and the thickness and everything. And what I really wanted to find out is if, if you give people dimensions, will you get the size you ask for back? Because that was going to be crucial for this swap I wanted to set up. Each little book needed to be the same. Hi, Laura. Each book needed to be the same size. Okay. So to tell you the truth, I forget now what the size was, but... Everything I got back, they were gorgeous. They were so cute. I'm going to show you what I got back. But my point is, you'll see, even though everybody was given the same dimension, let's bring them out. Now, don't get me wrong. They're all, they're all adorable. <laughs> all, all adorable. But I needed to see for myself. Now, I'm not going to remember whose is whose now. Oh, I'll remember. Um, I needed to prove to myself if this, the concept I had, if it was going to work or not. So there's one book. Let me leave this back here. I will forget. Some people signed their books and some people didn't. Hold on. And I don't want to lose track of whose is whose. There's another book. There's another book. Now keep in mind, everybody had the exact 
dimension of the size that I wanted to do this this project with. Okay, so there's a couple. Hold on. Here's another little adorable one. Hold on. I got a little box here. Have some more. Wait a minute. Oh, maybe that might be it. Hold on. Uh oh. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. All right. So these are the ones that came from the ladies that I gave them all the um the same dimensions. All right. So obviously. They all came back different. Hold on, okay, here we go. And the little, and isn't, isn't this darling? Every little thing in here is, is Western. It's adorable. Okay. All right. All right. So you say, well, what's wrong with that? They're really cute. Well, they are really cute. <laughs> They're adorable. Now, these came to me um, totally separate from, um, from this request. These are just some other ones to give you some ideas of how cute some of these small ones look. These little mini books. This was given to me just as some happy mail. Isn't that adorable? This is one of those uh, coin envelopes. And then what she did, these are um, um, the clothes um, softeners, you know. And then she just sprayed it and stamped it and glued it onto that little, that little coin envelope. So cute. And this is the same. This is a coin envelope, too. And then she just... Um, put different things in there, glue different things, collaged. And then she has a little pocket there, feisty. I try to be sometimes. And inspired by the stars. All right, so this is super cute. If I can get that back in there. All right, so that gives you another idea of how cute these little small ones look. And then, also in a separate swap, I received this one. Isn't this adorable? And this little sketchbook. Notice how much I've sketched, but I will. I'm going to use it because it's cute. And then this one, collection observations. This one's kind of chunky, pretty cute. Now this one is all decorated. This is like a little junk journal. Little bird, she put a stamp. She even wove some paper. I just noticed my hands are full of <laughs> stuff. I've been making little mini journals. Look how cute. And it's hand stitched, the signature. Isn't 
I just think it's adorable. She even has a mini tag. <laughs> anyway, it's just so cute. And so that's another kind. Now, my idea had been, I don't know if you guys have seen this before. Oh, I'll be like that. Where you get a, um, let me just use this as an example. I didn't don't have a book here but what you do is you get a book and you glue all these pages together so it's going to be you know permanently open and then you notch out little spots to put your book in the book, little books will sit inside of there and when it's all finished, it just looks so cute. All these little nooks and crannies with your little books all over the place. And, you know, you can finish these pages off. Leave it the original um, book page or you can, you know, you can finish it off any way you want, any look you're looking for. And then you have this to go on there. So my theory was, um, those of you that are in my Facebook group, my theory had been, well, we'll, as a group, we'll create this book, you know, and we'll make all the little notches and they'll be ready. And then, you know, once a month, we'll make a swap. And at the end of the year, we're going to have 12 little books that we'll put inside of here, you know, have six on each side. Well, it still could work, but we wouldn't be able to make the book and the little notches ahead of time. We'd have to wait till we got our book because we don't know what size it's going to end up being and make our little notches and put it in. And so um, it still can work, but I, I did the test run because that let me know that, you know, the, the notches for the books um, cannot be done ahead of time. You have to wait till you get a little swap book and put it in there. But I think it's kind of a cute idea. What do you guys think? I like it. <laughs> and um, let's see, what size is this particular? I think um, this looks about the size I was talking about. Yeah, it's an inch by about a little over an inch and a quarter, maybe an inch and a half. So that's, I think that's a cute size right there inch by inch and a half and I think it would work out perfectly and then we just stick them all in there well in the meantime um, there was um, one of my customers from my Etsy shop had contacted me because I don't know um, those of you that haven't seen them I make these large art journals that are made um, from plaster and fabric and papers and all this kind of stuff. And it's very time consuming and they take quite a while to make, so they're not cheap. I'll tell, be the first one to tell you they're expensive. But a lot of people said, oh, I wish I could have this, I have that, you know, I wish you made them smaller, or, you know, more affordable. So this one um, customer contacted me and she said, can you just make me a little small one? And um, I said, how small? And she goes, oh, small, you know, like a mini one, like two by two. And that reminded me of all of these that I had already done before. So I said, sure. You know, I, oh, wait, before we get all long winded on that. Oh, look at this. Someone sent me a little um, mini flow journal. Isn't this adorable? Isn't this like the cutest thing you've ever seen? <laughs> I mean, it's small. This is a uh, two and a half by two, which is perfect because then what you do is you just put your little scraps of paper in here. And so then if you want to write notes or if you're collaging or, you know, you need a little project that you take with you on vacation or, you know, if you're just sitting in the doctor's office and you like to doodle in your journals and stuff, this is a perfect little size. And then you can just rip out some pages if you want 
if you got your little glue stick with you and you're all ready to go. Or you can use it as a little glue book. You know, you can find small things that you want to put in there and, um, you know, make it whatever kind of journal you want. But I thought it was just adorable. A little boho mini flow. I love that. Okay. So back to, let me put these away. Back to the um, the little uh, little plaster ones. So I started to make one for her, and I thought, you know, I like to make, um, you know, at least four or five of something. It seems to go faster to me than making just one. So I started putting those together, and that's what I was doing before I went live. Um, I don't have any of them done. I've just started. But basically, um, these are small. <laughs> these are very small. The papers are about one and a quarter. About one and a quarter by one and a half. And so here is the little plastered fabric that I'm going to put around it so it fits like that and then I have this little this looks kind of dark it's probably hard for you to see let me get a different one I know with the camera everything looks a little different let's get this one's a little lighter let's try this one okay And so that's going to go there. I'm still going to put some little decoration of some kind. Is my camera going crazy? Little decoration of some kind. Maybe some little bit of a uh, little, I don't know yet. Something maybe crocheted or something, but very small from some laces that I have or some doilies that I have. And then if you've seen me do my encaustic work, then I'm going to put the encaustic on top of that. And that way, it's a special little book. It has a lot of variety. It's got the plaster, got the plaster fabric. It's going to have the encaustic on top. And then maybe, like I said, some, some fabric or doily or, you know, something along this edge here just to set it off. And I think it would look kind of cute. So I was going to get ready to start doing um, some of the encaustic. And so I thought, well, if people were looking for something to do or to watch, or you guys just want to hang out with each other and talk, you can do that. And if you haven't seen um, any kind of encaustic work, well, that's something you'll be able to see, too. So um, let me... Now, I've never done it on something this small, so... I'm not sure exactly uh, how all this is going to go, but let me get my stuff set up here. I've got to turn on. This is because I don't do bit, real big projects. I do small ones, so I do mine here on this Ranger um, melting pot and because... I'm not a professional at this. I just play around with it. So we'll let that heat up. And I'll get my brush. And let's see here. Get my little tweezers because I'm sure I'm going to need those to hold that down. And I might need to use a little smaller brush. And we might be set. I'm just gonna let that let that warm up. 
if you happen to have one of these melting pots and you've never done any kind of caustic, you might want to give it a try. Now, start off, if you've never done this before, just start off with beeswax. Real Encaustic has some um, resin in it. it. It's a little, you know, it's a little more, well, it's a lot more expensive. And for little projects like this that I would be doing, or, and you, if you're just starting, you really wouldn't need to get anything any more than that. If you're just going to be doing little, little mixed media stuff. And if you're just going to use the beeswax, you can get it pretty much at any, um, you know, like Michael's and you can get it online and, but it's just beeswax, um, natural. And that's what I use. And right now this was from a different project and I do have the encaustic medium. And so this is beeswax that also has resin in it, which basically just makes it harder. Because, you know, if you've ever tried to put your your nail inside of, you know, just a, a regular old candle, you know, it can go in. So the resin is what makes it harder, a harder surface. That's the difference. But for little projects that, you know, that you'll probably want to do, um, the beeswax is fine. All right. Also, I found... I found this is about a year ago, but this was this I got at Tuesday morning. It says it's regular six dollars for two ninety nine, and this is pellets of beeswax. So you know if you happen to see this or you bought it once and you forgot what you were going to do with it, <laughs> then um, you know bring that out and use it. Now if you don't have you know one of these. You can get a hot plate of, um, or a griddle, I should say, something like that. And what you can do, hold on, I'll show you a little piece here. What you can do is you can get some little tin cans, you know, like make tuna cans, or if you have cats, you know, they're little cans. And you just put that on top of that um, griddle and then these will heat up and of course the griddle also i'm sure has you know a thermostat and you don't want to go over 220. if you go higher than that then your wax will start to burn so we don't want that to happen so just get yourself a little tin put your little wax in there put it on top set it at 220 and as soon as it starts melting like this is right here you're almost ready to go. All right. Let me just get this clean up a little bit. I'm not sure what I have stuck on here. It should only be wax. But Sometimes I get a little crazy. Oh, I think this is when I just added some color to my wax. That's why it's a weird color. So I don't want to put it in the wax because then this color will um, transfer into that and it won't be transparent anymore. Okay. So what's everybody up to? Let me know. Tell me, where are you from? If I don't already know you, what state are you are you at right now? Okay, that's clean. All right. Okay, it's almost all warmed up. Oh, 
Alrighty. Oh, and I also need, hold on, I need to get my heating tool. to get a little bit of, hold on one second, some aluminum foil. I think I'll use this instead. Okay. Alrighty. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is um, in between each layer of your wax, you need to heat it up. So I just do that with my little heating tool. The professionals, when they're used, doing big items, they use, they have a little small propane torch to heat things up with but I just deal with smaller things and so as long as I can get it to melt a little bit that fuses it together and it bonds and I can do that just fine with my heating with my heating tool Nova Scotia oh what, what are you, are you going to be selling or are you going to be buying at the craft market? Okay, so what I'm going to do here right now is I'm going to put a little layer of this right onto the top where I'm going to sit this little picture. Okay, now. Oh, journals and mini albums. Oh, fantastic. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I hope it's not too loud. I just heat that up a little bit. So that picture kind of bonds with that. And then put it over there. And then we heat it up again so that, that will bond together.
And you do that just maybe two, three times. All right, so now you can make a decision with each one, each little project you do, if you're just going to leave it like that or if you want to add some color to it. And I think for this one, I got this one too wet. And I think for this one, I'm just going to add a little bit of color. And I'm going to let this dry put this over here it wasn't cooling off because it, it was conducting the heat on this so I took it off so it could melt maybe I won't use that Okay, so one thing you can do with these, I was just trying to get some contrast. You can you can use your pen pastels if you have some. All right, so I'm just going to put a little bit on there and let's just see what it looks like. Because if we don't like it, we can always change it. Let's just play with it and see what happens. And then I'm going to put some wax on top of that. and see what that looks like. Because remember, we don't like how these colors look. We can always change it again. All we have to do is um, either get some white encaustic, or we can just go ahead and put some more plaster over it. How we can change it up. Kind of cool. I like how it looks. Now, if you have too much on there and you th and you think that you want to take some off, when it's still a little bit warm, you can always take a little off if you want to. If you thought, mm, maybe I have a little too much. As long as it's still a little bit warm, it can be taken off very easily. Because it's usually at this stage when I'm doing larger pieces, that's when I do some engraving and things into it while it's still soft. So I don't know if you can see this because 
it is so small but the um, the texture and the softness that the um, the beeswax gives it I'm sure it's kind of hard when something so small like this but I think it's pretty cool and then while it's still pliable you know put it into the shape roughly of what you're gonna do your little journal and we're getting there we're getting there hi karen well, we started off explaining my idea for some little mini books, how it started, and, and how we moved on to making these little ones, these little plaster books, and having a little encaustic on top. We're gonna, I'm going to do another one, so you'll see how it's done from the beginning. But I think that came out kind of cute. We'll let that dry, let that cool off. And we'll pick out another one. All right. So let's put a little bit down. Now we're going to get the heating tool and heat it up a little bit to help it bond to the picture. Then we let that cool. What kind of images? Well, a matter of fact, it's packaging. Oh, it's packaging to Tim Holtz. Somebody sent me some packaging, and this is what it is. I guess these little pictures come in, you know, I don't know how many come or what they are, if they're, if they're stickers, if they're, I don't know what they are. But this was the packaging, so she sent me two of each, so I just cut out these little pictures. So that's where this little guy came from. It's from there. I've actually never seen these in the store. I don't know if they're older. I've never seen them. Okay, so that's dry. And we'll put another coat on there. And after each coat, we heat it up so it'll bond and fuse together. Okay, let that cool down. See, is this one? This one's, yeah, this one's already cooled down nicely. Oh, this is going to come out nice. And then later on, I'll figure out the little trim I'm going to put here. Yep, yep, yep. It'll be cute. It's going to be cute. Let's put one more coat here. Hey, 
Betty. I don't know if you guys saw my um, my other journals I did with the Asian covers because those were done in encaustic also. Yeah, Betty, I never know what I'm going to do. I don't have anything, any time set up for these. It's just like, oh, I'm doing something. Why don't I go live and see if anybody wants to watch? <laughs> So I don't know if I want the other ones as dark as these came out. This is a little dark for me, but I'll leave it. If this works I've never tried this gluing some of this fabric onto that with the um, with the beeswax let's see what happens what's the worst can happen it just won't stick right where's my scissors it's about the worst See if we want to put that there. And let's just play with it. See what happens. All right. Cross your fingers. Bound it together. In theory, it should work. <laughs> Still wet. I mean, hot. And let it dry completely. Let it cool down. See if it sticks. Mm -hmm. 
Oh yeah, it's, it's sticking and as it cools down. Okay, good. I can put another coat on that. How about if I just put, hmm, let's see. What's that, Karen? You've only done one project with encaustic, and I'm not sure why we bother. Is it Mod Podge faster and close to the same result? Um, not, not for me. Um, encaustic, what it does is it builds up and it creates dimension and you can, um, engrave in it. You can paint it. Um, you can antique it. Um, it's a whole other layer, um, to your project. So, um, I'll go get one of my other covers. Where is that? Show you what I mean. There we go. Yeah, that's going to work. It's going to work. Betty, these are going to be covers for little mini albums. Here's my little pages. I've got two little um, signatures that are going to go in here. And I was saying before, there was individuals, you know, that liked my plaster books, but they're too expensive. And then somebody asked me to make them a mini one. So I said, sure. So I'm making several mini ones. <laughs> So that's what that's all about. Let me put some of that on there. There. <laughs> um, well, as far as melting is concerned, if you use the, if you use the encaustic, use this, it's not going to, unless it goes over 200, you know, degrees, it will. I mean, if you sit it out in the sun on a hundred degree day, it will, but the projects you make with this should not be out there. <laughs> and so, um, you know, it's not for everything. It's not a substitute for glue by any means. It's just, to, you know, to provide a whole different look. Hold on one second. I'm going to go get those other ones, the other covers that are done. These are some Asian covers that I um I've already made several of the journals, but these are still to be made. But these are the covers, and these are all done with encaustic. And they started off with a bunch of papers, and then I built up uh, on top of that, and then I did some carving, and I brought in some um oil pastels and went around there and created the look and there's quite a few layers of um, encaustic on these and this one too and 
this one. Hey, Scotty. Well, um, someone asked me to make them a little mini encaustic plaster little journal. And so I was putting a few of them together. So I just went live to see if anybody was around, tired of cooking. <laughs> oh, you're in Conway. Oh, uh-oh, Vicky's here. Vicky's in the house. Vicky, look what I'm doing. These are going to be um, little mini encaustic journals. Look. <laughs> um, are you talking about these? Can you hear that? They're hard. <laughs> but isn't this cute, Vicky? See, Vicky, Vicky is a, um, she's an encaustic artist. I am a encaustic hobbyist. <laughs> but, um, but these are going to be cute. I really do think they're going to be cute. <laughs> can you? Yeah, I can. Hold on. Don't get. Um, I don't want to get you sick. Is it focusing? No, it's not focusing. It's too small to focus, I think. Yeah, I think it's focusing too much on the stuff down here. <laughs> Hold on. No better, huh? Oh, wow. Oh, well, yeah, so Vicki, do you have process videos? I've never noticed if you do or not. Okay, I don't think I'm going to put any color on this one. Yet. Anyway, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Mikey likes it. Okay, let's try this one. Oh, in your, in your school, yeah. I didn't think I had seen you um, do it on your channel. Okay, here we go. And I'm probably doing this all wrong, Vicki, but it's working for me. Can't complain when it's working for me.
prime rib. Oh dear. <laughs> well, I'm having um, a cup of hot tea and an oatmeal cookie. Doesn't that sound exciting? I don't know how you, all you guys are around men that cook. Vicky's husband, Scott, Scotty's brother-in-law. I didn't get one of those. Oh no, <laughs> you poor thing. Okay, let that one dry a little bit. We'll start in another one. Hey, I might get these all done tonight. Don't put the little trim on them. Tomorrow. Oh, man, Laura, I don't want to hear about it. I'll tell you how bad it is for me. My husband will cook for the dogs and doesn't cook for me. Our dogs like scrambled eggs for breakfast, <laughs> but they're dog food. And if I'm not around, he will make the scrambled eggs for the dogs. I don't think he's ever made scrambled eggs for me. That's pretty sad. I did not marry my father. You know how they say sometimes, you know, you marry one of your parents. My dad, you know, he he's he knows how to cook. He knows how to clean. He likes things in its place. He's organized. Not my hubby. And in his old age, he's becoming a pack rat. Of course, I can't say anything because, you know, <laughs> I have my own issues. <laughs> I tell him, but at least I use my stuff. I know where everything is. It has its place. You ask me for it, I know right where it is. I can go get it.
<laughs> Vicky. <laughs> oh. So if he goes on vacation or has to go out of town on business or something, what do you do? Hot pockets? I know. I think we've all of us crafters have issues. Because if I was honest with myself, I think the hunt for the stuff is sometimes more fun than doing stuff with the stuff. <laughs> and I know you guys know what I'm talking about. So what I really need to be is a buyer for a hoarder. That would be my ideal job. Shopping for a hoarder. That sounds like a pretty good job description to me. I will shop for you and you can hoard it. Woohoo! Wouldn't have to spend any money. Wouldn't have to find room for the stuff. Just buy it and put it at their place. Let them walk all over it. <laughs> and my husband, like I say, you know, he's getting kind of bad. His, his, um, his problem, believe it or not, are books. And I understand his psychological reason for it. He's always been a reader since he was very, very young. He was always intellectualized everything. So he, you know, he read like research stuff. He wasn't into, you know, comic books and stuff like that when he was young. <laughs> he read, he, you know, he read research material. <laughs> Kind of nerdy, right? But um, his family, for various reasons, you know, moved and different things. And they had to leave things behind. And he always lamented that he always, you know, because books are big and bulky and everything. He always ended up having to leave his books, which were his, like, his everything, and so, um, so as he got older and had his own home, we too, because of his work, we moved a lot during the middle portion of our marriage. And um, so I made sure we always made room for his books <laughs> so he could take his books with him. And now he's just out of control. <laughs> he's just out of control now. <laughs> Which is funny, you know, because we tear books apart. He reads them. <laughs> we alter them. He reads them. And sometimes I go looking through his books and I go, wow, I'd like to have that one and tear it apart. I don't dare touch it. <laughs> Hey, how you doing, Deb? Forgot to look up. <laughs> Lurking. We like lurkers. Lurkers and lurkers. Carb-free diet. Oh, so you had to sneak in some muffins. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Laura, 27 years. That's a fantasy to me. Where I live right now is the longest I've ever lived anywhere, whether as a child or an adult. And this is only, we've only been here uh, 10 or 11 years. This is the longest I've ever lived anywhere. And my husband also. So I guess that's why he's like 
hoarding those books like crazy. Yay! <laughs> I know carb free. My my husband, he's almost like on a carb free thing. He just found out oh, about nine months ago or so that you know he's like borderline diabetic. And so they told him, you know, you gotta get your your numbers done. Down, done. <laughs> your numbers down. <laughs> and um man, he got serious so fast because he he just he wanted to do it. They they put him on the like the lowest dose of pills that they can give him. But he was determined, you know, he wanted to get off those pills. And um when they when they gave him the pills, he started off, his sugar was like two hundred or something. And um, he was supposed to go back in two months or three months or something like that. And he had brought them all the way down to like 120. And she was like, his doctor was in shock. How did you do that? And he basically, you know, he cut all sweets out. Um, and he wasn't a big sweet eater anyway. But what he did love to eat was um, potato chips. I mean, him and potato chips were like best buds. And he liked to try all different kinds. <laughs> and there was always a bag in the house. He usually didn't stay full for more than a day. And he loved ice cream. That was about his only sweet was ice cream. And now he doesn't eat either one of them. So I know he can discipline himself. He just can't discipline himself when it comes to cleaning or his books. <laughs> so he can't fool me. Okay, what's going on over here? I haven't been reading anything. An empty restaurant with booze. Oh. Oh, how cool. What a cool idea. Oh, I can see it. I mean, I can see the whole thing. Well, I used to live in a loft. And when I say a loft, don't think of those, those beautiful lofts like in New York and Chicago and, you know, those refurbished ones that you see on TV. No. <laughs> I lived... <laughs> The building was, I don't know how old that building was. It was super, super old. And um, most of the people in there, um, first of all, it, was, um, it wasn't residential, right? And it was commercial and oops, more like industrial because everybody in there made something. And... Uh, Anyway, one thing led to another, and I got a part-time job with this man that was a carver. And he carved um, handmade. Ooh, what happened here? He carved. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> it's like, what happened here? He carved handmade picture frames. And, uh, and he did beautiful work. And a friend of a friend of a friend 
was working there. She had to get away on emergency and she didn't want to lose her job. But um, so she basically asked me if I would do it while she was gone so she could come back. And the boss agreed. So that's what I did. So I went over there and if you can imagine, you know, those beautiful, beautiful um, hand carved frames that are in like museums. All right. This is what he did. He hand carved all these things. OK, well, you know, you don't know how many times you look at something and you just don't realize what's involved, you know, until you see it from the beginning to the end. So I would see him bring in you know, this raw frame that was just nothing. It was just, it looked like a two by four, right? <laughs> and he would come in and he would carve it all. And of course it's all roughly carved out. And then the next stage is where you have to um, rough sand into all those crevices and all that carving. So that's what I would do. I was in there. Oh, my, at the end, my hands felt like they were raw, you know, and, and you and he had little tools and stuff and you'd go in and you, you know, rough sand it all. Then after you did that, then he would go in there and he would um, do some more carving. And then after that, then. I came in with finer and finer and finer and finer sandpaper until, you know, you, the test was he would get a lady's um, stocking and run it across. And if it stuck anywhere, he made me start all over again. <laughs> so, so it was, um, it was quite um, the process. Well, anyway, so then in, when in uh, one of the other buildings, I mean, same building, but another area in the building. Um, I discovered that once he was, once I was done with making it feel like a baby's butt, um, it went over to this other guy. His name was Paul. And where Paul was, he did the, um, the gilding. These were all gold gilded um, frames. So one day, um, he asked me to go take it to Paul. He says, can you take this? It's not too big for you. Is it? I said, no, I can take it. So I had several and I went over to Paul's area and took him the, um, the frame. Well, at that point, you know, the only kind of frames I'd ever seen are the ones, you know, you get at Michael's, <laughs> which, you know, they're nothing compared to a real frame once you've seen how they're really made. So I walk in there and I see these gorgeous, gorgeous frames all at different stages of being completed. All the way from like when I bring it up, you know, when I'm done with it, to when all of the gilding has been done and all the ceiling and if there's staining, if there's, you know, whatever it is you do. And they're just gorgeous. So I'm standing there watching them do this. And he says, have you ever done gilding before? I didn't even know what that was. And I said, no. <laughs> and so he goes, well, this are the stages. So he's just showing me the stages. And the stages, you know, after it's all been sanded and after he gets it and everything. Then this was the first time I had ever heard the word gesso. I didn't know what gesso was. Never heard the word. And he made his own gesso. He had all the, you know, the powder, the glue, everything. And we did it old school. We made it the Italian way. I don't know if you want to know how real gesso is made. <laughs> it might gross you out a little bit, but um, um, we made real gesso. And those of you that know what gesso, real gesso is, you can imagine what it smells like. So... 
So that's one of the things I learned to do. I learned how to make gesso from scratch. And by the way, the gesso we use is not real gesso. I'm just saying. Doesn't matter what you pay for it, it's not real gesso. But that's another story for another day. So let's get back to the gilding. So I learned how to make the gesso and I learned how to put the gesso on. Okay, so you put the gesso on and you ladies know when you use gesso, it's rough now all over again, right? It's not like completely smooth. So now after the gesso gets put on, now the next stage, because, oh, by the way, then I started working for him because I wanted to learn what he was doing. So after you put the gesso on, um, you have to come back and sand that. Now, you have to sand that with the finest sandpaper and you have to slightly dampen it, but you can't dampen it too much or else it becomes, the gesso becomes too soft. And then when you sand it, then you leave all the lines from the fine sandpaper. And you can't leave any lines because if there's any lines, then he makes me go back and put another layer of gesso and sand all over again because any mark, any nick, any line, any anything that you leave is going to show through the gold that eventually gets laid on top of these frames. Okay. So now I get the gesso done. I get the gesso sanded and the gesso looks the way it's supposed to. Yay. The next stage is that now you have to put on a clay-based gesso and it's a certain kind of a paint that is made from clay and we had to make that from scratch and then we have to put that on top of the gesso after that's all done it has to be sanded again and make sure it's done right so that there's not a mess for when we put the gold on okay so that has to cure. Each of these have to cure certain stages. And so now we're probably like about, if you're only doing one frame, which we aren't, we're doing multiples. Let's just say you're doing one frame. Um, we're already probably starting putting on the gesso. We're already a week into doing stuff to it, letting it dry, starting it all over again, sanding it, letting it dry. So we're up to like probably like five days a week. Now it's finally time to put the gold on. All right. Now I don't know how many of you have seen sheets of gold, but the sheets of gold, if you just normally breathe, they blow away. <laughs> and we were not using, you know, the metal sheet stuff, the fake stuff. This was real gold, so you can't mess it up. All right. So then what you do is with water, you have brushes and you brush the water over that last clay-based top and that water activates the glue that you have mixed into that clay-based top. And then you lay, you, then you lay the, the gold on there with a special brush that's made from squirrel tail hair and you lay that down <clears throat> and um, you hope that you lay it down perfect and straight so that when you put the next one you don't want to overlap because anything you overlap is a waste and then you aren't going to have the right size of <clears throat> um, joints. And that's how they judge if you're a if you know how to um, gild properly is that your your um, pieces of gold need to all be perfect because if you overlap, then the next one's going to be a little shorter than the other, and then the other one's going to be a little bit bigger than the other. I mean, it's just like a highfalutin thing. I'm telling you, it drove me crazy, but I learned a lot. And I learned why those frames that we made went for thousands of dollars and went into museums 
and the paintings were thousands of dollars. But I learned a lot there. It was a lot of fun. And at one point, um, one of the guys that was there was leaving and the landlord of the place said, you know, there's some people that have been wanting to turn some of these areas into lofts. And I go, oh man, that would be super cool. And he says, well, what's going to open up here? Do you want to try and do something with it? He says, um, you'll have to do all the work, but I'll give you six months free rent. So I asked my husband and, you know, he's crazy like me. He goes, no, why not? Let's try it. So we got this big old space. And the reason I brought any of this up is because when Vicki said, <laughs> it's a long winded story, right? <laughs> Because when Vicki said her fantasy of her little craft area, mine almost looked like that in the sense that it was a big giant place. I wish I could remember how many square feet that was, but we left it all open. And all we did is we put tables in there of different types. And on one side, we put a bar, a real long bar. And then we only um, closed off one section where we put um, the bedroom and the bathroom. Everything else was open and um, you could see everything and all of our stuff was everywhere. And when Vicki said that, it just, that, that loft just popped into my head and uh, I could visualize it. But we had to go up on a freight elevator with an old-fashioned um, metal closure. And um, it was a lot of fun. I think my husband and I are a little crazy. We do the goofiest things. I don't know. But that was fun while it lasted. Then we had to move. <laughs> I know, Vicki, you would have loved it. It's just, you know... It was so cool. And the windows. Well, first of all, the ceilings, I think it was like 20 feet high. And the all the front, it was it was wider than it was long. So it was all windows in the front. Those old fashioned ones from those old um, industrial places where it was it had that um, that metal in between the glass that looks a little bit like small chicken wire. So all those windows were that, and they were all the way to the ceiling. I mean, it was, oh, it was fantastic. And uh, it, had been, it had been a dream for a real artist. Too bad I wasn't an artist at the time. <laughs> I was a gilder. <laughs> I was making frames for artists. <laughs> Okay, well, that's kind of cool. It's working out. Yay, it's working out. I can't believe it. I'll get these all, all put together. And then tomorrow I'll decide if I'm going to put any of the color on them or leave them the way they are. I'm not sure yet. I don't know. But anyway, that was that was really a fun time. It was a fun experience living there. <laughs> I know. Just, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you really aren't buying gesso. They're telling you you are, but you aren't. No, no, no. It's like, it's like telling people that you're buying butter, but the only thing they they sell anymore is margarine. And then you find out what butter really is and that you're eating artificial margarine and you go, why are they calling this butter? And it's really margarine because nothing in the margarine, you know, resembles what's in butter. <laughs> That's kind of sort of what they're doing to you. <laughs> Vicki, I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> I wasn't going to tell them about the skin. <laughs> I 
That's why I said you don't want to know what it smelled like. I'd get up, I'd get there in the morning, and if I had to get a bath, because I had to cook it, you know, and um, it was like, oh boy, you better have, you know, you kind of had to decide: should I eat before or after? <laughs> <laughs> what should I do? Oh, look, she has look she has a little thing on her head. How cute is that? Oh, that's cute. Okay, what are you guys talking about? Let me go see. You know, I don't even remember which way it faced, Vicky. Let's just say it did. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, it was not a fun thing because, you know, you had to heat it up to a certain temperature. And, yeah, I don't even let, really like the smell of cooking chicken. You know, like chick my husband loves chicken soup. And I think every time I do that, it reminds me of making gesso. It just, like, makes me a little nauseous. <laughs> and we all know he's not going to cook. So, you know, uh-oh, is that supposed to go on here? Oh, I want to get my small ones done first. See, I was talking. I wasn't paying attention. I almost made a mistake. Almost. I want to do all the same size first. <laughs> Why am I evil? Why am I evil now? <laughs> what did I do? I didn't want to tell people about the rabbits. You did. It was bad enough I had to tell about the squirrel tail for the brush. <laughs> I think I have one. I think I have one. I think I kept one as like a little, a memory of the old days. Then we had to varnish them or shellac them, depending the the uh, the one that ordered the the frame would tell us, you know, what he wanted. Some of them wanted them shiny. Some of them wanted them dull. We had to develop these different. Um, glazes and and then they would choose the glaze and of course we could never make the glaze the same twice because you know we hand mixed everything <laughs> it was like oh my gosh the pressure But I look back at it and I think, you know, wow, that was a neat experience, you know. The work behind the art, behind the artist, which was an art of its own, you know. And then after that, it was so funny when I would go to you know, flea markets and stuff like that, I'd look at the frames. And I developed a little collection of frames. And what I would do is I'd come home and I'd sand them. And then, you know, I'd redo them all. And then I would gild them. And I wouldn't put anything inside of them. I just hung them. I had, in my other house, 
um, I just hung them on the walls. I had high ceilings on this other place I had. And that's all I did is I re I re did the um, antique um, frames and that was my art and I just hung them on my walls. And then I had to go and discover all this crazy paper stuff. It's driving me crazy. Okay. Yay. Let that dry a little bit. Let that little puppy dry a little bit. Where are, do I have most of my small ones? Ooh. Uh-oh. Oh, I got most of my small ones done. Hmm. Maybe I'll start a bigger one now. Oh, is it already raining in California? Good. I was going to call my mom today. I haven't yet. But that's not good in one way. Because they're going to get those mudslides. You know that's what's going to happen. Let's hope they get a little bit of rain. It's going to be harder to find the loved ones if that mud comes down on them. All right. In that um, in that building where the loft was, there were these. For lack of a better word, I would call them catacombs. I don't know what else you would call them. But through the years, you know, they had, um, you know, built off sections for, for businesses. And sometimes the way they would build it, there was gaps between one business and another. So there was like these little hallways behind some of these, these rooms inside this big giant building and this building was like about four or five stories and was like three blocks long it was gigantic and so one day one of the guys that worked there I guess he just went on a you know expedition through the whole place <laughs> trying to see what he could find and he found all these little places I'm telling you about that was behind businesses and there'd be like a door and the door was to nowhere it just like looked like a maze that went through this whole building. Well, anyway, he went down to the bottom floor and he went through this maze and he found this place that, oh, I wish I'd had a camera. I didn't even own a camera at the time. But um, he got me and he says, Rosemary, you've got to come and look at this. And looking back, you know, I'm glad he wasn't a psycho because, um, you know, well, you'll, you'll understand. Anyway, so I go down. He's a co-worker of mine. So I go down with him, and he takes me down to the bottom floor. We were on the third floor. We go down to the bottom floor, go through these, like these like I say, like catacombs. We had to end up getting a flashlight because at one point there just wasn't any light because there weren't any windows. And there I am like an idiot just following him down this dark path, like a rabbit hole, the, like, kill me, kill me. And... So we're going down there, and um, and so he says, now wait. He goes, we have to go um, um, up this elevator thing. <laughs> a weird, it was an elevator, but it was weird. You had to crank it. It had an old-fashioned crank, a wheel, I should say, and you cranked, and you pull, and that's how you got up, all right, to the next floor. So 
we did that. We cranked it and cranked it. And we got all the way up to where we were going to go. And it was to the top floor. And at the top floor, you know, you open up that gate and you get off. And then there's this little narrow pathway. And you go, I don't know how he found this. And you go through that. And then this, you open this door. And there is a room that is round. And if you look straight up, you would swear you were in Frankenstein's laboratory. Because when you look straight up, it was it was a dome and it was glass. And you could see that from the outside, but it didn't look that big. When you were down in the street, you know, five, five stories down and the angle you would see it at, it just looked kind of like a bubble up there. But when you got into that room, it was humongous. It must have been like two stories itself, that room, round with that round thing up there. And somebody had been living up there. <laughs> because there was stuff there, like for a person. <laughs> and there was there was just the oddest stuff that was up there. And all I could think about was Frankenstein. And one of my favorite old movies is Young Frankenstein. And all I could imagine was them coming down on that, <laughs> on that gurney thing that they had rose up to the top. And I could hear the squeaks of them coming down. Oh, it was weird. But after that, I never, I never thought about the place the same. It always kind of gave me the creeps whenever I went home because... <laughs> Because I knew it was up on the top floor. It was spooky. <laughs> but it was cool at the same time. But, um, yeah, but sometimes I think about, you know, like if someone were to ask you, you know, what's the stupidest thing you ever did? That would be probably one of the things on my list. Following that guy, I don't know what possessed me. I think at the beginning, I thought we were just going to a different, he said he was going to show me something weird. And I always thought we were going, you know, on the same floor or a different area. I had no idea where we were going. And then once we started going, it was like, well, let's just go. <laughs> I just glad I was, you know, I'm alive to talk about it. But he was right. It was really weird. So I went back to go see it. I couldn't figure out how to get there. So I told him, you know, I said, oh, I got to show my husband this thing. He's not going to believe me. And he goes, oh, I'll take you guys. <laughs> so he gave us the tour again. This time he went with more flashlights. But it was cool. Really cool. All right. So enough of that crazy story. What am I doing now? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is one of my favorite scenes. You know, that whole movie, it was so funny. When I went to go see it, um, I saw it with some, with some friends, you know, at someone's house or something. And it was like nobody was getting the jokes. And every single line in that movie is a joke. And they're just sitting there. And I'm dying laughing with every scene. And they're looking at me like I'm some kind of an idiot, you know, and I'm thinking, get a life. This is the funniest movie I have ever seen. <laughs> and it still is. It still is. All the all the lines are so classic. All right. So. Let's start a big one then. I got the little ones done for that stage. I'll work on those tomorrow to finish them. Let's do this. <laughs> You're going to start making me laugh at all those things. I have the movie, you know. <laughs> I might have to watch it tomorrow now. <laughs> How about Rosie Hay? I like that one too. Roll, roll. Would you like a roll in the hay? <laughs> <laughs> and 
And those of you that don't know what we're talking about, go watch it. And if you don't think it's funny, watch it again. I think that's cute right there. I don't care what anybody says. I think that looks kind of cute right there. Oliver team. I still ask my husband that <laughs> when I ask him, you want a cup of coffee, honey? Oh, that's okay. Perhaps some old routine. Another movie I think is funny. And I think there's like two groups of people. Either they hate the movie or they love a the movie. I love the movie. And it's What About Bob? I love Bob. Some people hate Bob. I love Bob. You're usually on one camp or the other. <laughs> That's cute. You're married to a Bob. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, you know, my husband, I think he's like half a bob. I think he's kind of half a bob. Yeah, I don't think he's full fledged, but he has his bob moments, that's for sure. I have both those movies because I think I think both of those are like one of my favorite comedies are those two. That might have to be my marathon day tomorrow. Well, marathon is only, you know, only two, not so much a marathon, but <laughs> Now, this one movie, it's super, super, super old, like 1940s or something. And I just think it's adorable. I don't know why I giggle every time I watch it. I watch it at least once a year. It's called um, Life with Father. And um, I just think it's so cute. And it's funny because... You know, it, it takes place in the, in 18 something, I think. And I just watched it like last week and it's still so relevant. It's, it's funny. You'll have to watch it to know what I mean. I think they have it on, I know they have it on YouTube now. If you don't, if you don't see it on Turner Classic Movies. It's on YouTube. Fully color and restored. What's in the hot pot? 
in the hot pot is some, hold on, da -da -da, encaustic medium. Yep. Which is just a fancy word for beeswax with resin. <laughs> And so um, someone had asked me to make them this little mini album, mini journal. And so I decided, well, if they want one, maybe some of the people in that shop at my Etsy shop might want some. So I'm making some extras. They're really mini minis. <laughs> Here's one that I put some pan pastels on. I don't know if I like it or not to give it more of an antique -y look. Maybe yes, maybe no. And then here's the two little signatures that will eventually go in there. Kind of cute, kind of cute. When I get them all done and dolled up, they'll be cute. Did I heat that up? I forgot. Let's heat it up anyway. Okay, I'll get dry a little bit and put one more coat. What I'm doing is I'm putting about, I'm putting at least two coats on top of the picture, one on the bottom, then I heat it up so it'll kind of bond, and then two more on top. And um, then what I'm using is just packaging, Tim Holtz packaging. I cut these up. That's what I'm using. Yes, I'm recycling. Well, we're supposed to have pretty weather tomorrow. When I say pretty, I mean, you know, sunny. Still going to be on the cooler side, but sunny. But Friday, I mean, yeah, Friday, we're supposed to get rain. And it's supposed to get cool. There we go. All right. <laughs> Abby normal. Now, if you haven't seen the movie, you think I'm crazy. Just go watch the movie, then you'll think I'm funny.
Two sweet cheeks. Your hubby. Oh boy. Okay. How many more do I have? I only have. Oh. Is that the last one? Hello. Oh, no, there's one more. One more. Two more. Then I'm done for the night. All right. I was going to decide. I have these little frames. And these little two books are going to be a little bit bigger. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to. Put the little frame on there or not. I don't know if it helps it any or it takes away from it or what. I don't know. Frame, no frame. I don't know. Well, I can always put the frame afterwards. I'll put I'll put the little girls on first. I put them on first. Oh, I did have one more. Hold on. Pull everything. One left. No frames. I'm thinking that way too. <laughs> Oh, she looks so happy. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It is heavy. The frame is heavy and Louise is heavy on her end finger. Let's just go with a little tiara. <laughs> Let's go with a tiara. Now these are, you know, these little pictures are a little thick because it was the packaging. But if you're doing this and they're just like as thin as paper, um, thin paper, like copy paper, you can put it on there. And with just the rubbing of it, you create that little friction, that warmth, and it will stick it to the, um, to the wax. Just like for your first coat to just have it stuck there. Let's see. Alrighty.
I need one more coat on that, but let me just get these two girls down and then we'll be done. Or at least the stage will be done. And it's so funny, it takes just as much work to make a, a big journal as it is a small one. Oh. And they go, how come you're charging that much for it? Because it took the same amount of stinking time. Might take less material, but it takes the same time. Hey, Lynn. You caught us messing around here. You have to know the password. Is it Frankenstein or Frankenstein? Teresa, I sure hope so. I sure hope it cracks. That's what's gonna add. I want the plaster to crack. I want the wax to crack. This is one this is one cracking <laughs> journal. <laughs> See how beautiful? One more coat on these. One more coat. Oops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll help you with that bump. A little thick on the face.
So you've all seen it at this stage. And you can see how long it takes to do all this. And this is just the first stage. So when people start griping at me, but I'm going to charge for them, you guys got to come to my defense. Well, I know how long it took Rosemary to do that. She was up until midnight just putting that first coat of wax on there. <laughs> Anyway, those of you that joined midstream, it started off talking about making little minis and um, making little minis in um, our group. Not this kind of minis, but just paper minis. And I had asked a group of ladies, this was back in the spring. To um, let me turn this off. To make a couple of make a little mini, and it was a test, not a test. Well, well, whatever word you want to use. <laughs> I wanted to see if it, if the, my theory would work or not, my plan would work or not. So um, I gave them all the dimensions. Uh, of how you know the dimensions to make these little these little books and true to form they all came back a different size and I thought that would happen and I, I mentioned you know even though they came out adorable they all came out different sizes so I figured I figured it would happen and that would mean that my plan for the swap the way it originally intended wasn't going to work but I I made uh, adjustments so that it would work. And I'll show you a couple of ones that they had originally sent me. They're so cute. If you're here at the beginning, you already saw these. But... Look how cute these are. Let me move it over a little bit. I don't want hot wax all over me. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. And this was sent separate. This was just happy mail, but I thought it was so cute. <laughs> so anyway, you see what I'm saying? And so what the plan is, I'm still going to do it. Uh, it's going to be a year late, but hold on. Let me get a book here. Show you my intention. Well, what we would do is in the group, once a month, we would trade, you know, a little mini book, something like that. And we get an old book. We get an old book. And then what we would do, we'd glue all these pages together. And then we would carve out little, little niches for our little book. So they'd all be sitting in there. So originally I thought, well, you know, at the, the first month we'd all do the book together and show you, for those that didn't know how to do it, you know, how to notch it all out for these little books to sit in there. 
Well, that won't work because when you get your book, it's not going to be the size. It may not fit <laughs> because they're all going to make them different sizes. So plan B, which is just as fun as we can do the same thing. I'll still give the measurement and they might be off a little bit, but they'll get the idea that we need to try as close as possible to stay the measurement. And then we'll, you know, notch these out and you'll have a pretty cool little thing here with all these little mini books that you can take out and look at but you know they're going to have the little little home of the little mini books inside of your book and i don't know if anybody else you know will think it's fun and a cool idea but that's okay i can play with myself <laughs> i'll make my own books <laughs> well i don't have to i have a whole bunch of cute ones already to put in my little book See, I was tricky. I already have all my books. Look at this. How cute. Look, she has the, the spine and it's sewn in and it's just adorable. Look at that. So cute. And this um, feels like leather. I don't know if it is. but and, it, and look, it even has a little tag in there. I mean, what's not to love about this little book? It's so cute. It's adorable. And hand sewn too. And this one, this was from a, a different swap, but I'm going to put it in my little book too. This is a sketchbook. So I hope to sketch in here soon or stamp or glue or something. Very, very cute. Walk like this. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh, look how cute. Uh oh, this one's a little crunchy. I don't know if I can. Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to break the bind. I mean, yeah. Ah, ah. Slowly, slowly. How cute. These are just adorable. What is it about these small things? It just oh, and she even put material. Look. What is it about small things? It just mesmerizes some of us. Just adorable. Now, who wouldn't want to get this little book in a swap? Who? Who in their right mind wouldn't want one of these? And you should want to make one, too. Okay, that's super duper cute. <laughs> she's got maps, and then she's got Wander. Is that upside down? No. So you can staple it in. She stapled hers and it looks really cute. This one, she wrote a whole little novel. It says, Once upon a time, there was also, oh, whoops. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a beautiful princess. There was also a handsome prince. He wore lipstick. They battled. Pow! She slayed him. Rest in peace. <laughs> and ruled his kingdom happily ever after. <laughs> the end. So you can write stories, too. Oh. And this was from a different swap, but it, she's also going to be going in there. And this was like a, she made this like a junk journal. I mean, she finished it. It's pretty cool. All kinds of stuff in there. She even weaved some paper.
And she has three signatures, hand sewn. Stud. And a little tag. <laughs> cute, 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 cute. Which group? Hey, girl, you're not in my group. It's in, um, what's the name of my group? <laughs> trashy, trashy and flowish junk journals. Is that the name of my group? I'll put it on the, um, I'll put it on the description of this um, video after it goes up. Uh, I'll put a link to it. Cute. Cute, cute, cute. And then she made another one. This has a little Velcro. Ta da! This is for doing your collaging, it's more like a little flow. And at a different occasion, I was sent a little boho mini flow. How cute is this? It's just adorable. And so you can use it, you know, you can journal in it, you can glue in it, you can draw in it, you can rip pages out if you're, you know, on the go and you have a little journal that you're working on. It's just cute. That's all I can say. And then this one, hold on. Look at all, and these are all, this isn't, I mean, how can I say, I was going to say, this isn't just like a piece printed. She cut these little things out, and it's glued on, and it's distressed, and it's got both sides, like almost like a deck of cards, it seems like, but you know, I could make, um like, those um the little small ones, these would be really cool covers to other books if you get what i'm saying but look how cute this is they're all western <laughs> it's adorable Wow. Oh, and, oh. <laughs> and there's still more. Look at this. There's oodles in here. Yep. Homemade for sure. Oh, the doggy. But anyway, you guys get the idea. And so I still think it's a it, it's a fun idea. It may not work exactly how I had planned, but it might be better than I had planned. Because, you know, uniformity isn't for everybody. You want to have different sizes and it might look make the book look nicer with different sizes of, you know, little homes for the books and it might look pretty cute. I think. Oh, I'm missing out on all the chit chat over here. Oh, bye bye. I'm sorry I didn't get to say goodbye. I think somebody already left. Yeah, small stuff. I know. It can get to your hands.
I know. <laughs> it just never ends. <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> that's kind of the plan. And with the um, a lot of the um, little things that I that we're doing in the group right now, they're going to wrap up. You know, at the end of the year of some of the things that we're doing. And so this might be fun to um, to start for the new year, um, making this little book. It, wait, I got to remember what that's to. It, oh dear. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were referring to the movie. I'm going, what? I missed that. What? Is, what? <laughs> it can work. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, ladies. I've been here way too long, <clears throat> but at least you keep me company. And I got, um, whoops, what's in here? Oh, I thought, no, some of the books were in here. Anyway, <clears throat> I at least have the, um, the beginning of my little journals all ready to go. Then I'm going to decide, whoops, I've got to decide if I'm going to, you know, distress them, put any kind of colors, whatever and how they're going to get finished and and that'll be that so hopefully i can get them done tomorrow that's the plan and i think it was easier working on the big ones than on the small ones <laughs> oh dear i discovered my mother's bed oh Wow. Oh, how cool is that? Oh, well, thank you, Louise. I know it can be boring just watching people do stuff, but hey, at least I wasn't alone. <laughs> you can be bored with me. <laughs> So I'm not sure when I'm going to work on the rest of it or if I'll, you know, come back on. Because I know a lot of people, you know, are, are home for the holidays and, you know, some people, you know, might be alone or something. They might want um, to um, watch people slap on wax on stuff. <laughs> so I may or may not um, come on tomorrow and show you the rest of it. But I might. I just don't know. Okay. Well, again, thank you guys so much for keeping me company. And um, hopefully I will see you guys soon. Not bored. Oh, good. Thank you, Sherry. <laughs> All right. Okay, ladies. Thanks again. And um, I'll see you guys soon. Have a good night.